officially start in two minutes. Did I just see Pam East? Is there a way to chat with the other attendees? No, Pam, there isn't. And But you know what? It works out better that way because it becomes crazy on there oh my otherwise. God, nuts. I, I, it was back when, yeah, it's, it's totally crazy. Um, let's see, caught the last bit of that puppy conversation. It's a ridiculously ador- adorable puppy. Um, follow Mags over on Facebook and you'll see lots of puppy pictures. She's just so cute. Uh, and let's see, we'll start in just two minutes uh, and it'll be fun. How many people out there are interested in the Glowforge? How many people are interested in the stamp maker? Let me just get sort of a read on that. I know, Ginny, it's an adorable puppy. It's a stuffed animal. She's lying. Let me tell you about the stamp maker. Um, It got a really bad rep. Oh, it did? Because the instruction, the stamp maker, the instructions were not good. Okay. And and so I've, uh, with the help of my friend, Jen Vestal, I kind of have uh, wrestled that thing to the ground, and now I get great stamps. Okay, good. Because lots of people are saying stamp maker, lots of people interested in it at all. Pam East, <laughs> she always she wants to see what whatever you're doing, girl. Uh, oh, you have a glow, glow forge. Oh, nice, Tanya. You have one both. Yeah, they're all great. Yeah, Tanya's got one. I mean, it's all fun to see all of this stuff. Why not? It's the best TV, I think. Um, all right, one minute and we'll start. I'll go over a little bit of the tech stuff. Um, yeah, everyone, you know, I'm interested in both too. Um, Why not? Why not learn about more tools that we want to own? I saw the new iPad Pro came out today, so. I saw that. I I think I need to have one. Of course. I'm not like you. I don't run out and buy every new Apple thing, but I think I might have to have that. All right. We'll talk later because you know what? It is now one o'clock. And here we are. Fun at one. Thank you, everyone who's coming on, popping in and out. Let me just go over a few things uh, before we start. First of all, thanks a lot for coming. Uh, And all of you who come over to craftcast.com, we send out big hugs. Um, Lots of new things coming up at Craftcast. You know, because of our new world, it was going to happen anyway, but now it's sort of gone into overdrive. We'll have lots of um, uh, new classes as well as every week there'll be uh, a free event on Wednesday at one o'clock. And oh my gosh, we have some really good stuff coming up. I'm just telling you. And so you'll get to learn that people will have classes. Uh, it's all going to be fun way to keep occupied uh, during all of this. Uh, during today, um, a lot of you already found your chat box. If you want to write a question to us, just uh, look in there. It's in your go to webinar panel. Um, if for some reason, it looks like the presentation, you can't see anyone It disappeared. Hit the little orange button looking snowflake button, flower button on your dock, and that'll bring everything forward. That's the go-to webinar uh, icon. That'll help. Uh, We do record everything, and the recordings are for free as well, and they will be in... um, Oh, here's the thing. All right. Normally, when you purchase a class, the recording ends up in your craftcast.com, my library, automatically. Because this is a freebie and you're just signing up... um, quickly through the uh, the free, uh, just directly through the registration button. It's not going into your library. So what you need to do is, uh, and I'll send out an email that'll also say this, uh, but you have to go into, go on to craftfest.com, go to the, uh, the videos, you'll see it for free. You put it in your cart. Uh, if you don't buy anything else, uh, you, you purchase it, but you don't even put in your credit card. You just get it for free and it'll end up in your library. So that's how you get it. If you want to, we've extended the coupon code to the end of the month for sure for 30% off your entire purchase over at craftcast.com. Type in spring 2020 because I dare you like that potato chip commercial to eat just one. You're going to fall in love with some class on there that you want to do. There's so many amazing teachers and things to learn. So remember that. I know sometimes people forget and then they write us, I forgot to use my coupon code. Yes, we refund you. We figure it out. Uh, so that's going on. Anytime today that your uh, the presentation looks a little jumpy or animated with the videos, it all depends on how uh, fast, how strong your internet signal is. Uh, but the recordings always run uh, per- the way they're supposed to. Perfect. So not to worry about that. Uh, we, we take questions from all you guys during the presentations. And, and so we really appreciate, we love all your questions. Uh, what else do I want to tell you? You know, sometimes, I don't know, all of a sudden we've had thunderstorms and I don't expect that today, but you know, 
all electricity goes out, we figure it out, we come back on, we fix everything. No one can stop us crafters is all I can say. So thank you, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, and so now today, what do we have today? We have Ms. Cindy Pope, uh, teacher extraordinaire, everything silhouette, uh, everything uh, with all of her texture plates, her metal clay, you name it. She is, she's the pioneer woman. She goes out and chops down the trees and figures everything out and then comes back and shows us all how to do it so we don't have to suffer basically. So today she's going to show us how to make plates, photopolymer plates using the stamp maker. Um, and uh, as she's said to me, they didn't have great instructions with that. So we've figured it out. So I am uh, always glad to have that. Uh, and um, let's see, what else? Uh, just to go over everything, we'll be showing video shortly. Actually, we were starting with JPEGs. And first, uh, Cindy will do her presentation. And then Mags will follow up after with showing the Glowforge. Last week, Mags showed us a few things she's made, but we really wanted to see the machine in action. Uh, so she's going to show us again that and go over all of it. Um, any of you not familiar with the Glowforge, you might be upset to watch because you'll want one. Um, they're the new laser Mags, are they calling them again printers or etchers? I always forget. They call it a printer, but okay. it's an engraver. It's an cutter. engraver. Yeah, an engraver cutter. They call it printer, yeah. but I think that's confusing that they do that. It is confusing. Okay, thank you. Because it's really it's a magic. laser. Okay, I prefer that. It's magic is what it is. So yeah. uh, you'll love seeing all of that. And um, and so we're going to get started right now. Uh, yep, you're right. Everyone who's seeing the 30% off coupon co code right now, you are seeing it correctly. We're going to get started right now. So uh, a big round of applause and thank you to Miss Cindy Pope, who's going to start us off with this fun machine and tell us all about it. I know nothing about it, so I'm excited to learn. Thank you, Ms. Cindy. Thank you. I talked a little bit last week about I've been preparing for a class I'm doing where we're going to actually draw our images and then put them on metal clay. But you can also draw your images and put them on plates. And there's a couple different kinds of plates. There's photopolymer pl plates, which um, Pam East is great with. And you can uh, see some videos and some articles at Metal Clay Supply about the quick art plates. Those mm -hmm. are really nice quality. But I have been using something called the Image Pack Stamp Maker. And I sat in my closet for a year and a half, and then I had a project I couldn't uh, figure out how to do. And a friend of mine said, you got to make it using that stamp maker. And I said, I have it in my closet in a box. <laughs> and um, she really steered me in the right direction. And so I've got really great results, a really nice, deep, stamp and just and to go so, over you can use the stamps for texture plates for inks for polymer clay you can use it for anything correct right okay uh, um, i'm using it for metal clay but you can right. even um make the reverse of it out of um like two part uh, a two part molding material mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um yeah they're really great and so um i love how deep they are and how nice the texture is okay and you got yours from Dick Plick. They look like they're having some uh, kind of special no, or no? I got mine probably from Art Clay, who used to sell them. Okay. Or somebody, maybe online. But in the handout, you've got a couple links. Dick Blick is doing free shipping. Okay, great. We so love that. I got it. And the price is pretty comparable to anything you can get on Amazon. Okay. Um, my, I, of course, ordered some of the image pack um photopolymer packets in case you guys buy them out. <laughs> I've already ordered them. <laughs> Is it, do you also have all the yeast we're looking for or no? <laughs> no, I don't make bread, but my son does. And he's a little bummed about not being able to get bread flour. All right. Well, we'll see if we can help him out. All right. So here we go. Image pack. Oh, this is it on Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Sounds good. And that's right. free shipping too, but Amazon is kind of uh, prioritizing shipping. So I don't know Correct. how quick Correct. it will be. Right. Unless it's a medical thing. Right. Okay. All right. I know you love this. So Zentangle is um, the technique I learned for drawing. And I'm going to show you a bunch of drawings I did. I did it about three or four years ago. Wana Reed Tanner said I, she was a little tired of me complaining about not being able to draw. And really, you know, when you're an artist and you do, I used to do custom work, they'll say, well, can you draw me a picture of it? And I'd say, no, mm -hmm. I can't. 
but I would make everything out of uh, polymer clay, which is good practice when you're new anyways. So I'd make it out of polymer clay and I'd show it to them. But she said, I'm a little tired and I saw this Zentangle thing and I think you should try it and I think it'll help you with your drawing. And it really has, besides the fact that drawing is good for you mentally, it's kind of meditative, mm -hmm. um, it gives you some focus, it lowers mm -hmm. anxiety, and it, it's really, you know, there's art therapy and a lot of it involves drawing. So drawing is really a nice thing for us to practice daily nowadays. And Metal Clay now has a lot of great drawing tips they have drawing Saturday and Terry encourages you to draw. Um, oh yeah. Go time. on. Um, yeah. There's lots of people. Terry Kabalsik, he's doing draw on what day, Cindy? Uh, Saturday. It's drawing it's Saturday. Saturday. And he's a fabulous illustrator. That's worth going mm -hmm. over there and, and seeing his, uh, what he's doing. We love Terry. Uh, let me just say one thing. People who are new and are just looking for the, to be able to watch it. Um, Venera, did you find it? I think she did. Um, just look for that. It, you're, it's probably hidden on your desktop, the viewer to watch what we're doing. So yes, there's sound and you should be able to see everything. So find that. Oh, you got it. Good, Venera. Um, wait, what else? Did, did someone just said something here about another extra percentage off. Wait, let me just find that. Who just said that? Oh, Robin. Uh, after last week's fun. Oh, she went to a local instructor. Okay. You're doing that as well. Yeah. We'd love that. But wait, I think someone, oh, Robin said you get an extra 2% off Dick Blick if you go through Rakuten. Okay. I've never used that, oh. but there you go. R-A-K-U-T-E-N. So there you go. Thank you for that. We love saving money on things. Um, all right. So we love that. Uh, and then that's beautiful. So when I started, I got a, there was a little um, starter kit and I got the starter kit and I was really enamored because I found out that I actually could learn to draw, which was very uh -huh. exciting. And these are, there's some very famous people who've created patterns. And so I made them jewelry out of metal clay. And oh, this is before I, I think great. before I used the curio. Mm -hmm. So I, I drew the image and then I made them a little piece and sent it to them because they had lots of free resources. And I thought I could send it. And this one's a mixed metal copper and bronze. That they must have been thrilled to get that. I think so. And this is a mixed uh, metal. I think it's uh, dark champagne, bronze, and steel. Are those Hadar's clays? Yes. Yeah, those are fabulous. Uh, okay. So I wanted to show you that. You, and here's one. I think I probably drew this into um, maybe that little, that foam that uh, Wanda oh, used for a long time. The scratch, uh, scratch foam. foam, the stuff that take out that used to come in. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so. But, you know, now I'd, I'd probably do it, the curio or make a photopolymer plate. Right. But So I, I, I wanted to show you kind of how it can really inform some of your uh, art processes mm -hmm, and really mm -hmm. make you think about texture and design. So here, here's some stuff I did. And this is me, the non-drawer. Nice. So I, I'm just going to have her run through some of the work I did. I did a, a weekly challenge by someone called the Diva who now has carpal tunnel, but you can go back and look at her weekly challenges. And so I did them every week to kind of direct, point me in a direction. So there's lots of good art challenges out there mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. are, if you're, you're like, I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. I, and really that's, that is a great way to start. I think um, it gets you going. It's not like that total blank piece of paper feeling. Exactly. Well, that looks cool. We love that. Would you say again, people want to know more about um, Terry's drawing on Saturday. What's the easiest way to find them on Facebook? Is that Metal Clay if Now? You, if you go to Metal Clay Now, okay. Metal Clay Now has a theme every day. And they have like mixed media Mondays and they have texture Tuesdays. And Saturday is Drawing Saturday. So if you look back, if you type drawing into the search box, if you look back, Terry will put a drawing prompt up. He'll put some of his journals up um, and different people will put things up. And I really, um, I think it's a, and plus Metal Clay now has the most amazing Pinterest board. Yeah, it's And great. I have a Pinterest board where I have tons of draw, how to drawing things or drawing inspirations. And, you know, we don't need something complicated for Metal Clay. We just need something cool. Right. And I know Terry before all this. I knew him as an illustrator back in the New York City days. He's frigging, frigging amazing. 
So enjoy that. And you know what? While I'm thinking of it, I'm just going to say this anyway right now since we're a little more informal. Coming up in two weeks, shoot, I don't know how to say his last name correctly, but Remy is going to do a free demo. He's going to do a class as well. But he's going to show you how to illustrate, uh, render, gemstones and and really do complete drawings of your jewelry pieces he's going to show us how to draw a diamond how fun uh yeah i mean amazing so that'll be really fun too so um other rendering techniques and how he does that so um i just love that kind of stuff so i'm sorry we got off track here but it all sounded so well, good i love i love everything you do because you know i learned i took the my favorite class one of them, it's not metal clay, is the Jiggly Doll class. Oh, yeah, that's great. And I would tell you I can't sculpt and I can't do – but you know what? Um, every single thing I do, especially not metal clay related, helps my metal clay work. I agree. That's why I love having it all. And Cindy, yes, that's his last name, Remy Rotenier. Um, oh, and he'll be teaching – his rendering on Craftcast, uh, but we'll do a little teaser in, I think, two weeks. If you're on the mailing list, you'll get all the info about that. Yeah, he's ridiculous. Uh, oh, Pam said it's called Sketchbook Saturday to keep the double letter ah. thing. There you go. So you'll find it. And, oh, you know what? I'll just okay. tell you, anyone that, you know, any of these things we're talking about that's not linked on there, just um, send us an email at support at craftcast.com. You know, we'll figure it out and we'll get it to you uh, because other things come up. Um, yeah, Cindy, he is. He's awesome. All right. Uh, there wasn't a discount code for Dick Blick, Cindy. Just go on. Also, someone who well, just there wrote. there was a code. But, there was? Okay. Um, my stuff was not um, in the products that were covered, but I did get the free shipping. Okay. And Terry just said Dick Blick will take competitors' coupons as well. So there's some more Ooh. information about that to know. All right. Back on track here. So now what is this here? This is another, at. just a drawing. It's okay. a bunch of, you know, basically what Zentangle is, it's giving you individual techniques and then you can put them together. And I'm going to show you a really, really easy thing, but um, it's really fun to kind of create from something very simple, create something more complex. And obviously I like the little dark things. I like the spider web and the eyeballs. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm kind of into that, but um, yeah. And I learned a lot. Um, about drawing and how the first line you draw doesn't mean it and it looks like crap and then you start to kind of curve the line and you fill it in and all of a sudden it looks a little bit better and then you round it up and so I just mm -hmm, learned all mm -hmm. those little tiny techniques from watching videos mm -hmm. I and, agree and the little booklets that looks cool fine my little tree and that's got every different um uh, branch has a different technique all so, fun different and then this isn't a great one but i could draw you know as an undrawer i can now draw a little turtle and a little octopus and you know it, it's just kind of fun i'm thinking of doing it with the little ones since we're um i've been doing lego uh learning don't get me do. don't get me started on lego or i'll get on a whole nother tangent so <laughs> i think Alice this is, is great tacky, so. i am very I'm very into the whole Lego thing. I'm into the Lego Masters. They're on tonight. I'm very excited. Oh, we've been watching it. Is it the bridge one was great? It's great. Anyone else? If you haven't started watching Lego Masters, um, write that also down as a maybe because it's adults building with Lego. It is so good. So very cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So now uh, let's see. We're up to here. These are your butterflies okay. doing both right. reverse. And, so, okay. So last week on the fun at, um, at one, if you didn't watch last week's, go ahead and download it because it's there's all kinds of people on. But the bottom right hand corner is what I drew by hand. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to show you how to go from that kind of messy, imperfect drawing to a really nice, smooth um, shape. So I'm going to show you a, a very simple design and how to do that. And then we're going to show you how to make the plate. Okay. I'm laughing because I, people are writing in, what's, let's Lego master. So we have, <laughs> I have to be concentrated now over here. Just, it's, just Google it's on it. Fox, yeah. I think. It's on Fox. Yeah. Just Google it. You'll find out where it is. So, all right. Okay. So now we're going to figure out how to go from step to step. And I think, are these your drawings that you showed how you really cleaned them up? 
yeah, so I went from the bottom, and then here's, I printed, the, we in when we do a photopolymer plate, we print out on, like, overhead material. Mm -hmm. You want to get a really good quality one that's going to hold the ink. There's some one for inkjets called Apollo that I like, and the um, image pack uh, stamp maker comes with a packet of really nice quality stuff, too. Okay, cool. So these are a bunch of things, and I made jewelry out of all of these. And then I finally, um, since oh, and here's my plate, which you can see it's nice and deep. But once you see the piece, you'll see how nice and deep it is. Because next is the piece which I finally finished and patinaed. And I um, remembered that Pam East did a great video on patinas. Mm -hmm. So I watched her video first. I, a lot of times when I do something new, I'll watch a video from an expert. And Pam has lots of great videos. Oh, yeah, she and does. she's also, yeah, she's also doing a weekly program Wednesdays. Two times a week, Wednesday, on Twitch. Sunday, Twitch. Yeah. yeah, check her out. Now, wait a minute here, Miss Cindy. How the frig did you get that coloring in there? Is that patina? That's Pam's video. Yes, it's patina. It's liver, liver of sulfur patina. And Pam has a video on her YouTube channel, which yeah, I think I put in the good. handout. I think you did too. Yeah, that's great. She was doing something also with us that's a freebie. Oh, no, that was the gold. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, Pam knows everything. Wait, I bet Pam's online. Let's ask her if she is. She'll give us Pam is an investigator. Pam and I both have those kind of minds where, oh, I wonder if I can do this. Let me try it. Well, Pam is the queen of doing that. So she she just did a little chapter in her life on patina, and it's a really great video. Here it is. I knew she'd come on. Pam said it's called Perfect Patina with Pam East on YouTube. So add that to your list, people. That's fabulous. Um. Wait, let me take one other question I thought here was really good. Okay, Robin wants to know, do you have to use inkjet printer or will a laser printer do? Um, I think a laser printer will do, but I haven't done it on okay. a laser printer. With inkjet, you need to use special overhead material because you want the, um, the ink to adhere to the overhead material. So it they have special coatings. And the one that, the Apollo one, which I like, um, has... It has a sensing strip and it also has a rough back. And I think it throws the ink onto the rough back. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. I, can, because of that sensing strip, I can put it through twice. So I get a darker image, which gives you a better plate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and what else was someone saying here? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, let me just say something technically to everyone that you can hear me now. If you do lose sound at one point, it's usually your Wi-Fi wavered. So that does happen. Yes. Um, did you see? Oh, did you seal the patina in? Vicky wants to know. No, Pam talks about sealing too. Okay. I don't usually seal my patinas because sometimes it affects the color, and um, you lose some of the purples. They turn a bit orangey. So I'm just leaving it as pati my patinas stay pretty good. Okay. So. Uh, and Shelly want to know what's? Oh, that's a good question, Shelly too. What's the maximum size of the stamps? Um, four by two and a half. Okay. Uh, now, this co the company that actually makes it is called Image Pack. They yep. also will do st custom stencils for you. They'll do custom stamps, stamp sets as big as eight and a half by eleven. Okay. So, if you have something you want to do for production, um, they're they're a great company. And is this one as good as? Also, Pam's reminding me. Yes, we have the gold adding for free over at Craftcast, which is great. Um, uh, and if you want a kombu, if you look oh, at kombu, Pam right. has a class with kombu, and if you look at the on her Twitch stream, she was streaming the beautiful, beautiful kombu pieces she does. And if you want to learn to do that, that is a fabulous class. It is great. Um, Sam, no, not everyone can see comments. I just have all the controls. It's just easier if I just sort of control it. It'd be free for all because um, we have so many people coming on. I just want you to be able to concentrate on seeing everything. Uh, now, Kathy, and thank you for that, Sam. Kathy also has a great one. There's a specific transparency sheet for each type of printer. Be sure to get the right one for your printer. Inkjet will never dry on laser jet transparency sheets. I wonder how you found that out, Kathy. <laughs> well, mine says quick dry on inkjets. And um, the, I did get a new one. There's some actually, since I was doing this a few years ago, I just used my last sheet of my Apollo. And so I did get some other ones, 
but they don't have the little sensing strip at the top. And I didn't think it fed through quite as nicely. There you go. For the double, I had a little like, when I did the double print, it was really nice and dark, but it wasn't quite as good. So, right. because it wasn't right on top. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to take one more comment right now. Pammy said, no, you can't you can't see it, it'll wreck the color so that we can move forward. But uh, keep putting your questions in and when we get to a good breaking point, I will go over all of them again. Um, all right, now so here's gonna... an app. Okay, what's this app yes. about? So Adobe Capture is a free um, app that you can download into your smartphone. You can download it onto your iPad or your iPhone. And that's what I'm using to make it go from my icky drawing to magic. So nice, something nice and smooth. That's what I a butterfly love, got from. I love an app that goes from Iggy to Magic. <laughs> I know. And it's a it's an app that's been around a long time. It's free, which I love. Right. And um, yeah, I also have Adobe Lightroom on my iPad. I think they're trying to get you into the Adobe monthly subscription. Um, but I just love their iPad apps. And this one, you know, somebody like Allison who knows um you know, Photoshop, there are there are six or seven different options okay. for um, capture. I'm using the shape one, which is creating this lovely smooth shape. And I'm also using patterns. But okay. there's a bunch more that um, you can look at. So you can download it if you do not have either a smartphone or um, uh, iPad, you, uh, mobile. Yeah, a, a, something that you can use Android apps on. Mm. Um, there is something that for Windows programs that lets you approximate to pull in Google apps. I don't know. But so you might want to, tr there may be some other ways, but you, there right. are cheap iPads out there, like yes. a little tiny air. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, there's good ones out there. All right. So now we're going to start with a video here. Uh, okay. So I'm going to show you a little, this is just a quick draw. Um, I'm starting with my organic um, teardrop template because I mm -hmm. didn't want to have to draw the outside shape because I'm not great at drawing shapes. And I think it's a really fun thought to make a bunch of one shape and then do a different pattern in every single one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is something that's, um, it's a little Zentangle uh, called, I think it's called Oraleaf. That template. And, yeah, and so I'm just, and I'm using, last week I talked about the Frixon uh, marker pens that are erasable, and you'll see how great those oh, are. Oh, I love the quality, love right? That quality is, is that a Dick Blick yeah. item? Uh, you could get it at Dick Blick or um, any kind of off yeah. at Amazon. Okay. Um, so what happens is oh, when yeah, I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh great. my gosh, I, I messed up a few places, and so I'm going to erase the pen. I love it. I know that links in the handout for sure. The name of those pens, those that's really fun. And they come in all different thicknesses. Um, the one millimeter ones, the ink isn't quite as consistent as the 0.07. What are you but, using um, here? I, um, this one I think is the point. It is what it was. 07. I just saw it. Okay. But I use, I use um, both of those. So, so I'm creating little chambers. And then I'm doing a little internal chamber inside. Now, I, I, this is a, based on a Zentangle, but pretty much I did my own little thing with it. Okay. Because it doesn't turn out quite the way. And so I'm just, any place I don't like, I'm just kind of smoothing it out with the pen. And normally in a Zentangle, you go in and then you would fill in those spaces in between the boxes and the, and the lines. You'd fill them in with your pen which is a lot of work. And when you try to go digital, even though you think it looks totally black, you'll get some little white spots. So Capture is gonna fix that program for us. So All I'm right. Just... Let me take questions while you're doing this, unless you need to say something okay. else. Um, nope. Uh, all right, so wait, let me back up. Everyone's excited. Uh, oh, we'll, we'll go into this after. The, the Silhouette Mint does make uh, stamps as well. I believe the main thing is they're not as deep without getting in. It'll be a no. big discussion, right? It's a little different kind of a result. Um, Jerry. So I'm, sh oops, yeah, I'm sorry. showing you where, where, I, where I filled in a little bit there. <clears throat> That's me, what you would do in the whole, all, that whole bit. Got it. Right, right there. there. Got so, it. Okay. So, but we're not going to have to do that. I'm going to show you a cheater easy way because laziness right. is the mother of invention. <laughs> Uh, Ginny, the name of that pen, I know it's sort of a funny thing. It's in the handout. If you didn't grab it, it's, um, 
Frixon. 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 F R I X. Uh, jet pens they have, is a great they come source. In okay. colors. Oh, they, they do. Come in colors okay. too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Jet pens is a great source for Frixon. Okay, there we go. Um, you're, it's not in the handout, Janice. I didn't put it in there. I thought I did. All right. Well, Frixon. The handout is in the interface, Bonnie. Uh, just look around for it. If you can't find it, you can send us an email at support at craftcast.com. And it's a little tricky at first. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, these are more detailed than, oh, Terry wants to know, are they more detailed than photopolymer plates? I They're deeper. Okay. And I have better success. I did, I did you know, because the, I'm an investigator, I had some students taking a texture class with me. Okay. Um, and the silhouette software. And so I did, I spent about two weeks using photopolymer plates and um, using stamp maker. I was, had a lot more failures in the photopolymer plates. Now I did take a class on Craftcast with Erin Elm Harris called, um, Oh, right. They modernize it. The write it. Write it. Yeah. yeah. And so that helped me a little bit, but I still don't get the depth. Now, um, Pam East has really good photopolymer um, videos over at Metal Clay Supplies, and they have thicker plates, Quick Art does, but I still have better results with this. Well, you know, there is, I, I have to also say, there is a photopolymer class on craftcast.com with Barbara Becker Simon, and she uses another way as well. So check them all out, and you'll find what works best for you, I always say. But um, wait, let's continue here with the video. And, and the image is the same. Right. So the image, uh, everything up to where we're printing it out in the overhead material is the same. So here we have the image. And the first thing I do is I go into my photo editor on my iPad, and you're seeing my iPad screen here. Mm -hmm. I have a nice little program that, and, and the first thing you do is the magic wand, because that often helps. Well, that's and the then magic. I, it's the magic. And then I go down to the contrast because in anything where you're doing a plate, you want, and when you're using, taking it to other programs, you want the white whiter and the black blacker. Right. So I just took the contrast all the way down to where it was really nice and white. And then I'm going to save my image. And now it's ready to go into the capture program. And do you just open it in the capture program? How does it? Um... Um, well, we're gonna we're gonna say the capture program in a minute. Okay. And then then um, so here's the capture program, and so we have a lot of different sh things, but I'm using shapes, and you can see all the things. These are all drawings I did. Uh huh. And I'm gonna just import the image, and it just says from your camera roll. You could import straight from a camera, but I like it better this way. Okay. And there's that image. First thing you do is there's a little slider on the right. You slide that up and down to get rid of as much white as possible. Mm -hmm. And this also has a magic wand, which is auto clean, which I love. They've just um, added that in December. So once that's done, I hit the check mark. And, and we're already... going to pause here for just a second because I wanted to show you the different parts of this program. So there's a program where you see we're on refine. You yes. can see there's an eraser at the bottom. There's a paintbrush and there's an undo button, which is my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. You can also use crop. And then at the magic thing is the smooth, which we'll use at the very end. So we're going to be starting with refine and we're going to be going back and forth from the eraser to the paintbrush. Okay. Just wanted to explain that ahead of time. So what I've done is I've chosen the eraser and I can change the size of the eraser. Oh no, I've got, I've got, I'm in the pen. So I'm just getting rid of all those white parts. Oh, so you're and adding pixels to... there. Got it. You're making it darker. Okay. Right. right, right. It's like taking a little pen and going over it. Right. Because I, obviously I thought that there weren't any white spots, but obviously when it went through the, the, but I actually took a photo of it. My camera's better than my eyes, so. Right. So then I'm going to actually go over to the eraser, and I'm going to erase some parts that are kind of icky, like that little nub over there. Mm -hmm. And I love the undo button. I love 
everything that lets me fix my mistakes. And I'm assuming the undo button is that backwards arrow right there on the bottom. Yeah, so if I screw up, you'll see me using it a couple times, I'm sure. No, we love undo. (laughs) (laughs) It's really nice. So I'm just rounding things out and futzing with it. And, you know, if you're an artist, you know, the image is everything. So I spend the time on my image to make it nice because if I make a plate out of an image that doesn't look good, that that's not very helpful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So now we're going back to the um, paintbrush and guess what? It does a bucket fill. So uh-huh. if I just click on the empty space, it'll turn it all black, which is much easier than coloring that in. And it's much better because it's all totally black. So I'm just clicking on all those empty spaces and filling in the black. And if you're a Zentangler, you know that's going to save you a lot of work and a lot of images. And then I'm going to look at it and say, am I happy with the shapes? And the answer, of course, would be no. (laughs) So I'm going to use that eraser and I'm going to erase it and try to even out the space between the lines. And this is kind of an organic thing, but I'm looking for chambers um, Mm -hmm. that could be enameled or you could put resin in them. And so I really want a nice deep chamber. So I really want the chambers to look good. And so I'm just going through and using my eraser. And when I screw up with the eraser, I'm going back with the pen and I'm just evening everything out. And that's kind of, um, and I went back a couple times. So once I'm done with that, Oh, I see a little nub in the inside. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these, a lot of these things, um, the smoothing function we're going to do at the end will fix. But I will tell you, um, and here we go with smooth and smoothing is off, but we're going to turn it on. Oh my gosh. Look at that. It creates everything into a nice smooth line. Mm. And, and you could save it. And if you're a, a silhouette person, you can save it as an SV, send it as an SVG to yourself, but I'm just going to save it as a picture. So I, I like to save to my camera roll because I like to have the most recent thing. And I did go back and I did edit it a little bit more and I'm going to show you that picture. All right. So that was capture. Wait, is this video? Let's see if we're almost done. Cause I just, yeah, I just want to recoup. That's amazing that you can save it SVG because that'll work into bringing it into the Glowforge, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking that. I know. Yeah. All right. So will you just do a quick um, recap of the different softwares you use? What you started with, you did your drawing with the pen. So I did my drawing and I took a picture of it with my iPhone. Correct. You brought that then- into. And that I, then I went to iPhone has a really nice little photo editor. Every photo, the photos now, the cameras nowadays have the best photo editors. And I, I switched it, um, the contrast. First I did the magic, the little magic wand they all have. And then I did the contrast. So the white was whiter and the black was blacker. And I saved it again. Then I just bring it into the capture program. And that's where I can do the erasing and the drawing. And you could actually add a bunch of dots in the, you know, you could do drawing in that program mm-hmm, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just using my finger. So, so I don't have, I have an Apple pen, but I, it's never worked. <laughs> so it's not very helpful. I need to take it back to them, but now they're closed. Um, but so I'm just using my finger and I do it on my phone too. And because of the undo button, if you screw up, so really I'm getting great results on my, even on my little iPhone. So you don't need to have any fancy equipment and it's a free program. There you go. And I believe you put those links all in the handout. So what you've done is gone from drawing with the pens, Uh finishing up your drawing to capturing it and starting to edit it to smoothing it. So now you have line art and you can save it however you want. And here's the, I did edit it a little bit more and here's what the final one looked like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got it. That's great. Um, All right, let me just finish up with any other questions. Okay, you get it. Great. I just want to go over that, Uh, Sylvain. That was great. Um, The important thing to remember is if you, once you're done, you go and look at your photo and you see something wrong with it, which happens to me a lot, you can go back into Capture and edit. Just be sure if you make any changes to always go through and smooth it at the end because it'll look prettier. Right, right, right. Um, All right, there was just a few more things here. Let me go over because we have 
few hundred people on here, so I just want to answer some questions. Um, sure. Let's see. Oh, Shelley brought up a good thing. If you're on a big computer, you could use Photoshop Elements, um, and it's uh, you can get it less than a hundred dollars now. Okay, um, but that's another way to do that if you're not on mobile devices. Absolutely, there is lots of different editing programs out there. Um, can I ask her which pro which part of Photoshop Elements does it? Because I had a student on yesterday and I don't have elements. So I'd be interested to hear like which part does that smoothing because it, since it's an Adobe program, you would think Adobe products would be able to do it, but I haven't. I bet I'm sure it can in Photoshop. It has to. Okay. I could help you later on with that um, for sure, Cindy. I'm not getting Photoshop. I, I, I could do everything in the Silhouette software. Yeah, yeah I agree. Sure, There's no so. reason to at this point. Um, all right, so Sid wants to know, oh, the handout is in the interface there, Sid. You should be able to find it. If not, just send us an let email. Me, let me give you a little hint on the handout because it took me a long time when I was watching classes to figure this out. Tell us. If you, cl if you click on the handout, it's going to download onto your um desktop on into uh, a PDF opener. There you go. And what happens is you're seeing the go to meeting opener. But if you would close down go to meeting, it would be in your like a little downloadable PDF file. Order. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I, I would, when I closed down my programs, it's like, oh, there's where it is. So it is downloading. Um, but it, you're not going to see it while you're in go to meeting. There you go. Thank you so much for explaining that. Uh, all right, Shelly's going to check that out. Um, we will maybe handle your question. Um, I know no one on can help you with the Cricut Joy today, Sharani. I cannot. No. But it's a cute. It looks like it's a it's cute. cute. Little... It's cute. It's uh, cute. All right, so let's move on here. <clears throat> Stay focused. All right, so now we have another video, and it looks like you played around now with the Alto with this. Yeah, I wanted to sh teach you guys. Um, I have a really, I'm not spatial, innies versus outies are always a problem for me. So I wanted to show you when you're going to get an innie and when you're going to get an outie, which is important because for enameling, you want your chamber, you want your stamp to create an innie in the metal clay. Right. So here's a little visual. The white chambers are going to be in innies, okay? So I'm going to um, flip, I did a 3D model of it so you could actually see it. And what happens is, those little, um, the white parts, mm -hmm. the photopolymer is going to shine through and it's going to create a hard raised part. Mm -hmm. And when you press that into metal clay, this is a stamp. If you press the stamp into metal clay, you're going to have an innie. A black chamber, if you, is going to create, um, the light is going to be covered. So there's not going to be hardening photopolymer under there. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is you'll have a hole in your stamp. If you were to push metal clay into that hole, you would have an Audi. Got it. You know, those are one of those things you sort of have to play with first because you have to go like it's everything is the opposite. If you're if you're spatial, it's not a problem. If you're not, it is always a problem for me. <laughs> That's a good visual, though, to look at there and, and help with figuring that out. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. And, the other thing I wanted to talk to is about is text and text has to be backwards. Really important. Because when you do the stamp, you want it to read right. I have done them backwards. Um, the, and sometimes you, you want a relief and sometimes you want an impression. So this is the same situation. You can see where the top one is a relief and we're covering up um, with black where the light's going to shine through. It's not going to harden into polymer clay. And then you're going to create an Audi which I love a relief words on metal clay. I think it looks really cool, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you can also do an impression. So I also wanted to show you with text, the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's having we both get options. Started. Yeah. And you, as I showed last week, you can turn something, um, you could totally reverse the colors, the black and white in the silhouette program. But I just wanted to kind of explain to you why you might want to do that options we love options yeah i like options too all right we're looking at a curio base i can tell okay here now we're in the silhouette software which is free um, you can also take your images and put them into work, microsoft word or whatever you want to use to print out on and i gave you some little instructions about um settings in your printer 
if you're using Microsoft Word on the um, handout. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is you always want, um, you can use any setup you want, but it's got to be able to have eight and a half by 11 paper for um, the media size. Okay. Because you want your printer to know the size of that overhead you're putting in. The next thing you want to do is you want a little box that's the size of that stamp maker packet. And I'm using the larger packets and I'm turning the line black and I'm making the line really, really thin. So because a zero size line will not print out on the printer, but I want a little guideline so I can cut it out. Okay. So that's your little template line. It, it's too thin to yeah. do anything. It's just a visual reference for you. Yeah. And I don't want it really dark on the overhead material, but I, I want to be able to see it. So right. I'm going to do okay. a few. I try to, I don't fi always fill up my whole overhead, but I like to do a few every time I print it out. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming so I, you don't want to waste material. I don't want to waste material. No. And they're not expensive, but um, still nice to do. So then I'm going to go and find that image. And here's my class. And it comes in really, really big. I'm doing a file merge on that. And I need to take the, uh, click on the box and make it much, much smaller. Mm -hmm. And last week I showed you how to um, do a trace and crop. We're not going to do that with this one. And but, any um, of you are freaking out with the software. We have great classes where Cindy walks you through the whole software. I have a version for um, and the silhouette. I would recommend if you want to learn the software, take the version four class and then the um, silhouette camp. Yeah. And then you'll Don't even worry about it. metal clay. Yeah, just learn the software first, and it's it. Uh, I do everything. I do like little printouts for customers. I I do everything, uh, like that has to do with graphics. I do in this. Yeah, it's your it's go to. So yeah, so put that on your list because um, Cindy walks through all the tools because it's a lot when we're looking at this. So just watch the possibilities until you learn the so, software. I'm and I'm using replicate. It can make you it can copy a lot of ways, but you can mirror and I love my earrings mirrored. That makes sense. Yes. And then I'm going to select them both and say my clay is going to shrink about 10 to 15 percent. So I'm going to start out with about maybe a little bit over one and a half inches, and I'm hoping to get down to one and a quarter when I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then I always keep a copy off to the left. Those of you that take my classes say, and I'm going to show you, we can use warp and we can funk up our images. <clears throat> warp is a great little tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes when you draw something or make something, it's very not organic looking. So you can play with, um, in the Silhouette Camp Day 1, we talk about um, Warp. And there's also something new in the newer versions of the software um, that you can automatically do things. So I did three of these. I used Shannon's um, mandalas mm -hmm. that we created last week in the class. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple other tribe, because I think we're all a tribe. That we need to act like a tribe and we're all together. And that's what we're doing today. And then I'm going to um, move them up and around so I'm not wasting space Okay. on eight and a half by 11. And then we're going to go ahead and print it out. And the way I print out of the Silhouette software is I hit File, Print. And I'll, and I'll make, um, I haven't done the mandala earrings yet, but I'll make them. File, Print. And then I always go to preferences and I want to make it best quality and black and white. And then I'm going to send to the printer and Perfect. I'm going to show you how I'm going to put it in the printer in just a second. All right. You have a little print, um, a little cheat sheet here for us. Uh, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to prepare the silhouette file according to the instructions. You can mm -hmm. also put it in a word document, probably in, um, Photoshop, however, however works for you, as long as you've created a nice image. Okay. You want to remove all the regular paper from your printer. Good, re good reminder. <laughs> because trust me, I've done that and it yep. didn't feed ni nice. Um, you want to put the inkjet overhead material in the printer. I do printing side down because my printer prints it onto that side that's facing down. Okay. Some printers may be different. They are. Um, Apollo paper has a rough side. So it's really easy with the Apollo paper because your rough side has to be down. 
that makes it easy. Okay. And then the other ones, you have, one side is a little stickier than the other, but it's a little tricky. And then you want to choose the um, paper quality best in black and white. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it on um, out of Microsoft Word, I think it's Photoshop, photo paper matte is the best choice. Okay. And then you want to let it dry for a few minutes. And then I send it through a second time. You don't have to do that. But my printer is very precise. And if I'm really careful that it that the little white sensor strip is right up against the front, it'll go through twice. So test it. And, you know, your printer may not have that exactness. Interesting. But one time okay. it's going to be good, too. But it's better. The darker the image, the better your photopolymer. Absolutely. So there's, there's the package of the Apollo. Mm -hmm. All right. And now here it is. What are we looking down on here? Okay. So that white strip is the sensing strip. Ah, got it. And that has got to be right up at the front of the printer. And then underneath is the rough side. I Since I'm not spatial, I have a really rough time with this. <laughs> so I want someone to tell me that because I've done it wrong. So I'm just trying to tell you, the part that your um, paper is going to print on, um, I've been known to actually put a little X on a piece of copy paper and send it through so I can figure out which way to put the paper. Got it. So that's how you do it. And when you put it back in the second time, you just have to make sure it's also snug up really nice against the front. Love that. Um, okay, so everyone wants to know... Um, yes, it's worthwhile, even if you don't want to work with leather for silhouette design boot camp. Uh, yes. Shoot, I need to put the, I don't have that link right here on me, but I'll get it before we all hang up. If you also just go to craftcast.com and type in Cindy Pope's name or design boot camp, it should come right up for you or in the categories you, on the front. Yeah. I'll tell you about the boot camp. Um, it was the hardest class I've ever done. <laughs> It was a three-day class. It was really, I worked really, really hard on that. But my students, um, it has projects in it, but it's a lot of it's technique-based. My students, basically, a lot of them spent all summer working through it. Yeah. So you could take it in 10-minute chunks. The beginning is how to create the shapes. So you could, I like something I can take in chunks. Okay, so I'm going to do yeah, this for absolutely. 10 minutes and practice this technique. And yep. it's got um, a ton of videos. Um bonus videos because obviously I in those all the time I spent preparing I had too much video so I I talk about um testing your your designs on paper which I think is a really good thing so I printed it I show you how to print and cut um your and number one I always design too big so if you could you really want to look at what the real size is going to be mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. also if you've got different parts um I like mechanical things that fit together different parts that um, you could see how they would fit together for construction. So it's, I, I think it saves you screw ups later on down the road. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I, I really love the class. It's one of the best classes I've ever done. Yeah. There's many hours. I'm just strolling through right now to get the link for everyone. Definitely get it when it's the um, sale is going on. Uh, you'll have, you know, a library of everything to do. Uh, and this summer, we're going to do a little boot camp update. So I'm going to show you some right. new techniques that right. I've learned. Yeah. So it's really good to have in your library. I'm sorry, I just don't have that quick link up and ready for you guys. But that's not good of me. Uh, who's out there? Hey, Pam, are you still on? Can you pull up that link? for the boot camp, so I can just get on with what we're doing here. And we'll get it to you guys. Uh, oh, here's a link. Robin did it. Okay, you guys are so good. Thank you so much. Here we go, everyone. Send to all. There's your boot camp link. Uh, can edit the image, but see no way to go to. All right, let's hold on one second for that, Kathy. Don't forget your question. Shelly, this is the help page for various methods of smoothing on Adobe's website. Oh, okay. So there's help pages on Adobe website that'll give you information on working with Photoshop elements. So good. Um, there you go. Uh, I hope thank Laura's you. on because we did a class yesterday and okay. we were wondering about that because she has elements. So. Let me put that um, in the chat box for everyone. I love how we all help everyone here and get it all out. Uh, there we go. All right. So now, where are we at now? Those drawings look crisp and lovely on in their uh, form at this point. How they get so crisp and like that is the magic of all of this. It is. It's lovely. All right, so now here is a exposure uh, 
chart okay, so, so you know how to do I'm that. I'm going to run over ahead of time. Since the instructions, if you have a stamp maker, don't even read the instructions. There you go. Okay. Because they're not right. It'll tell you um, a lot of different things. So. so the first thing we do is we warm up the lights for two to three minutes. I usually do two. Um, how warmed up the lights are is going to affect how much it affects that um, photopolymer. And right. so you want to be consistent. So um, let it cool down in between making plates. So warm it up for two minutes. Then you expose, and I'm going to show you this in a video. You expose the back for three to five seconds. The instructions say eight. I will tell you if you do eight, your stamp will not be as deep. That's why we use three to five seconds. And it's not 1,001. It's just counting to five. Got it. So it. All right, and so then you, this is important. So because, <laughs> right, it is important. Um, so what happens is that's going to harden the back a little bit. Then you flip it over, and then it's going to start processing your black. So when you flip it over, you want between 25 and 45 seconds. And this works for regular photopolymer plates, too. Um, the finer the pattern, the less time you need. So if it's really, really black and solid, then you need more time. So I go between 25 and 45 seconds. I usually go around 30. For that little image that had the mandala, mm -hmm. I did 27 seconds. But time is really, really important. Um, if, if you're interested um, on the Metal Clay uh, Supply website, Pam has a great video on doing photopolymer plates. But there's also an article by Suzanne McNenley mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. finer patterns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would take a read of that, too, because that's a really good article. Yeah. So once we've got it totally um, exposed, we're going to take it and we're going to wash it out with warm water. And the washout is where wherever the light is hit, it's hardened. But everywhere the light hasn't hit, it's all soft and gooey. So you want to wash out that soft part that hasn't... Um, been exposed right and then you have a stamp so after you do the washout you dry it a bit and then we're um and i'll show you how to how to do the second exposure um what kind of lights were you using okay this is the stamp maker light okay so the stamp maker is a little different than nail um uv lights okay it has four light bulbs you can use your stamp maker for photopolymer plates but I, you want to remove two of the bulbs, two or three of the bulbs. They're really strong bulbs. Got it. Okay. Okay. So what do we need? We need some Dawn. We need a little bowl and we need a nice soft brush. We don't need those quite yet. So I'm going to take them away. We need the stamp maker. And I've given you a link that, um, uh, with a company that shows you how to put it together. And then it has a little clamping system. And it's got really strong magnets. I had a hard time getting them open. <laughs> oh, huh. And it's got a, one side has a little indentation. And that's where we're going to be setting up the packet. And you have the stamp makers come in this uh, box. You do not want it out, just like photopolymer plates, where you have light. So I stuck it under the bed <laughs> until we're turning the lights off. <laughs> Okay, that was the first time I've ever heard that is something we have to remember to do. We're going into the dark room now is basically it. We are. Okay. okay. So here we go. So I've got the printout. Mm -hmm. And I've got the little clamping system. And I'm mm -hmm. going to open up the clamp. And where I have that little indentation. Oh, I turned off the lights. Because mm -hmm. I had to take up my my uh little packet and sorry about the lighting guys but I just, we got to do I it in the dark do this yeah yes yeah, so it has to be in the dark, dark room work otherwise yeah. it's gonna screw it up so i'm gonna open this up mm -hmm. and i'm gonna put the rough side up of my little image okay where you feel the ink got it yes because it's solider on the other side and i want it really solid against the glass and then I'm going to put that little packet on. Mm -hmm. um, really important, the way you know it's the right side up is you can read image pack when you put it on. It's not backwards. Okay. So look Good for tip. the word image packed. Important tip. Yeah. Then it, once you've got it properly centered, you put the clamp on. And once the clamp is on, it's not going to move. Okay. It's a really great clamp. 
And then you squish it down because that evens out the um, gel polymer that's in there. And we're not going to turn it over because now we're going to actually, um, oh, I'm going to cover it. And now I'm going to warm up the machine. I actually put that under the bed too. I don't want any light to get <laughs> Um, You know what, Ruth, the no reason light. that's not in the handout, that last picture was a last minute ad. So that's why. Um, we'll see if we can add that into that handout, um, that last prep sheet there. That's why it's not in the handout. Uh, so we will, let me make a note and we will fix that. Uh, all you. right, here we go. Okay, so I've heated it up and we're counting down. I've done it for two minutes. We're counting down, four, three, two, one. And now we're ready to do my exposing. Okay. So um, I didn't flip, once I did the layering up, I left it with that um, gel packet on the top and the image on the bottom because we're going to harden the back of it first. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it, um, and this is a different image because um, of the video. Um, I couldn't video and then run back in to do the washout right away. I understand. So I'm, okay, so I'm going to put it in and I'm going to count to five. Oh, I always okay. cover the outside because um, UV light isn't great for your eyes. A lot of people don't when they use UV light. I always worry in the nail salon and I'm immediately flipping it over and then I'm hitting my timer to go to 20, um, 20 or 30 seconds. And remember, if it's a little bit finer, make it lower. Make it less, you mean? Less, less, yeah. yeah. And if it's a really, really, if there's a lot of black on the image, this is a really, I watched a million videos because I love to do the research that goes along with this. Mm -hmm. And there was some really, really good techniques that were shown. A, a lot of artists um, who do ink printing mm -hmm. use giant photopolymer machines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I learned a lot. Okay, so it's all. Um, We're ready, ready for the washout. Running into the bathroom, and I also don't have the lights on in the bathroom. <laughs> Very important. We're going to turn them on in a minute. But when you do the washout, you don't want it on. So Got first it. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take. I'm going to lighten it up for you in a minute, there, with the the magic of <clears throat> video editors. I'm cutting off all the edges. I'm cutting around all the edges with my nice Joyce Chen's. Be sure to rinse them afterwards. There yep. we go. So we're still in the semi-dark. Yes. And then I'm going to pull the top off. So you got to take it out the right way because one part is harder than the others. The top one is meant to just peel off. Okay. Got it. I'm going to pe peel it back. And there's your stamp. There's my stamp, but it's still got that gel in it. Right. So I need to put some warm water on and take a little a little dish soap and a nice soft brush. Um, so this is a brush I got from, um, I think, Boxcar, who does uh Oh, yeah, they sell. Plates. Yep, yep. It's a nice brush. You can also use a little nail brush, but the nail brush is harder, so I'm, I'm being a little softer. Um, I have less problems with accidentally taking off um, this than I do with photo, regular photopolymer plates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But here we go. So once I've got that all, all that stuff washed out, mm -hmm. I can turn the lights on because I want to see for sure that, um, and I'm going around in circles because you, you don't want to leave any of that uh, gel in there. Because that'll gunk up your nice clean space. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And put your readers on so you can actually... <laughs> So I'm seeing a little bit there on the edge, I think. And so I'm just brushing it one more time. And here we go. Look at how deep that is. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really fabulous plate it makes. Very cool. I mean, possibilities are endless for using it with your own artwork. I mean, come and, on. And, you know... You're going to save a lot of money if you can make this. Oh, someone asked before, I forget who did. What do you think it costs per stamp? Let's say you don't make mistakes um, when you get to the point you're just turning them out. What do you think the value is at that point or the cost rather? Well, 10 of the large stamps 
are $29. Okay. So that's um, $3 a piece. And your overhead material is maybe a dollar, a dollar fifty. Okay. So a little bit less, I think, than regular photopolymer plates. And I have a lot fewer failures. Okay. So with photopolymer plates, I, I like really fine designs. And I have this one really cool dot design. And I did it like seven to- or ten times. And I never got a good one on the photopolymer plates Mm -hmm. just because it was too fine yep okay and they just react so fast so um now here is okay go ahead i'm sorry i just good success and i will tell you there is one that's a little bit smaller but for 10 you get like 20 it's like 26 dollars. so i would just get the bigger ones and then put two images on each stamp yeah instead of buying the smaller ones um, Stephanie said, good. Thank you, Stephanie. Mushroom brushes are really good. They're really soft. That's a really good point too. Um, both Stephanie and, uh, Ainsley wanted to know, do they curl up like the regular PPPs? Is the smell similar, but do they warp? Um, they, I don't feel like they're warped. They stay kind of, um, wiggle. I mean, I have some that I made like five years ago. I still use, okay. um, I would tell you they don't, um, they're not beautiful, but they make beautiful imprints. <laughs> so okay. yep. um, I, I really feel like, and if you store them in a cool, dry place with like um, a piece of nice paper or like wax paper between them, I think they're going to last a really, really long time. Like I pick up, I, I don't always do that. I pick, I pick them up off the floor and put them away and they're, they're still in good shape. So wait, but, um, you just put that in there again in the water. Is yes. this, okay. okay. So what happens is, you, you have done the initial exposure, but now we need to do, um, it was still pretty pink and it's still a little soft. You want to totally harden the whole thing now that we've gotten the washout done. Oh, okay. So what I, I put it in, it says five minutes in the instructions. I put it in nine or 10 minutes and you put it in water um, with the texture facing up. Okay. And we're going to do it for... Um, 10 minutes, and then when it's done, we're going to take it out, and you'll see it's no longer really pink. Oh, okay. So it's hardened a, a lot more. At this point, I dry it off. I feel like they're still slightly sticky at this point. So I put them in the windowsill for a day or so. Just now, to dry naturally. One, yeah, and you could you, you want to totally dry it, but... um you you can use it before that day is up but to get it really nice and um and look at how beautiful that, that looks is. great that's <sighs> truly that is a little bit of magic i've got to say there that looks i'm just backing up a little bit that looks genius really good all right wait it, let me take another question robin said can you reuse the image or do you need to reprint them no you can reuse them cool Hold That's what I was doing when I was testing the photopolymer plates versus the stamp maker. I would use the same image on both to see what happened. So here's a picture of it in the windowsill. And you can, I tried to, it's hard to see how deep it is, but I'm going to show you it a looks piece pretty that I'm deep. On. Oh, yeah. wow. That's great. And what I did, um, if you have, are using a flexible clay, I cut little circles in it when I was, um, after I rolled it. And with flexible clay, like Easy 960 or um, Arc Clay 950 or one of those, well, Arc Clay 950 isn't flexible, but Easy 960 is and Flex is, you can just easily carve out those chambers. So what I'm doing with this one is I'm going to make an open skeleton leaf. And the one on the right is going to have chambers that I probably will enamel. Oh, Ms. Pope, once again, thank you. That is redonkulous, I like to say. All right, let's see here. Brandy wants to know, can you show a picture of the stamp you made and the end plate? I'm not visual either for the any outies. Well, that's the stamp she made. This is doing it, I think, Brandy, right now for you. Yeah, that's There's the, the stamp, stamp right there. and now you can see that's how the reverse came out. So now all of these are little chambers that you can put a damble in. So if you wanted something with, you want the chamber sticking up instead, you would want black where those chambers are. So um, the reason I actually put that little video about for the non-spatial people like me yeah. is 
for me, the way I watch a craft cast class, if there's something confusing, I go back every time I do it. Like a lot of times on Pam's classes, um, her little shading class for the enamel piece yeah, um, yeah, yeah. is so amazing. So I, I go and watch it ahead of time. So that little piece um, showing the Indy versus the Audi is, is yeah. Well, that's what I would look love, at every single time I do it. We love, that's why we love the pause button and the rewind button. <laughs> it is great um, because it is really helpful. And, and the way I do the projects on Craftcast is I, I do it just in little, I watch the whole thing during, usually live if I can, because I'd love to hear the artist and the questions. And then I watch the recording and I order all my supplies. I watch it again when the supplies are on order. <laughs> and when it comes back, I watch the first little bit and then I and do then a do little it. bit yeah, and I hey. get screwed up. I just rewind and it it's really, Listen, it's I'm the same way. I'm the same way. It's the best. Um, picture of the plates. Okay, Brandy, that'll be in the recording. If you want to go back and do exactly what um, Cindy just said, uh, and then let us know if it's still not clear to you, just send us an email support at craftcast.com. Uh, that's why we love recordings because it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to take in this it whole is. thing and you want to be able to see it again. Okay. You just cleared up so many things for people. They're very excited to see how to do this. Thank you for your genius. Once again, I'm glad to do it. And I love these uh, stamps. So I thought it'd be fun to, to share with those of you who've been trying to follow the instructions that aren't great. Absolutely. And use it. You can use it in anything polymer printing. Mm -hmm. That's what's really great. So I hear Mags's head going in the background. Your mind's uh -huh. thinking. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. All right, Missy. All right. We're going to move on now to the Glowforge. Let's just talk about something that another fun tool, bigger tool, more expensive tool. This is our laser printer, even though we really want to call it a uh, etcher or an engraver and cutter. This is what it looks like. I don't know which one is that. Is that the middle one or the? That looks like, um, that looks like the middle one. It does, right? The, the, yeah. The pro ha is deeper because it has a, a section that you can take out so that if you want to do larger sheets, right, you can, you can feed actually it through. pass it through the right. complete machine. Yeah. Right. They're all basically the same um, footprint. It's just that the pro is deeper. Right. T taller, excuse me, not deeper, taller. All right. So last week, Mags was showing us a bunch of things she made. I just pulled one out for her adorable Barley. Oh, for Barley, our sweet baby. So this was, I just took a paw print from the Silhouette Design Studio and I made the holes to have the pictures and I cut it out of, I think that one is uh, maple. And then I took um, chipboard and I did a inset of the frame so that I could make a backing for it. And then I had placed all of the pictures in it in the Silhouette software so I knew what size they needed to be. And I actually cropped them using the software so that when I printed them out on the photo paper, they were coming in at exactly the right size. So there's an inset in each of those holes for the picture to sit mm -hmm. and then the chipboard goes behind that which makes it completely flat all right so now i was just excited that we're going to just show it in yeah. action the machine right um, so this is um i've been asked to do a wedding favor which obviously now is the wedding date has been delayed but here you can see me i've created the image in the silhouette software you have to have business edition to save it as an svg so that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to save each of those as separate images. Um, and one will be the front and one will be the back. SVG is the new JPEG. So yes. it just means a scalable vector graphic so that you can right. print and it you anywhere. Can use, you can use JPEGs and PDFs and they each have different abilities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think in, J, in JPEGs, you don't get the separation out that you do. So see here how it separated out the two things. If you look on the left-hand side there, mm -hmm, you'll mm -hmm. see the leave and then you'll also see the engraving. So I can choose um, my material and then I can go in and I can say whether I want to score that, oh. cut it or ignore it. Cool. So I'm going to engrave the leaf veins and then I'm going to cut out the leaf shape. And did that... And you can do that by colors that you used in that file? Yes. Okay, yeah. got it, got it. Exactly. 
and you have the settings. There's basic settings for all of the basic materials, but you can play around with them to get, um, you know, a different look if you need to. So here I've already done, I've cut out the, um, the front part and I'm going to turn, now I'm going to turn the piece of wood over mm -hmm. and put that back into oh, that spot as a template uh-huh okay and then there's a camera in the lid of the glowforge so when i go back to the software so now i'm going to go in and i'm going to open up the rendering so now you can see i can move that over to fit into where the ornament has already been cut out and I'm going to line that up and kind of check it. I did some turning of it to get it all right. And then I'm going to tell it, instead of it to cut, I'm going to take that line and tell it to ignore it. Mm, cool. So we'll be engraving the writing, but we will ignore the cut line because obviously it's already been cut. I'm in love with this. So their app, it's an app online. Mm -hmm. um, so you do have to be connected to the internet to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a very basic, simple, there's not really a lot of any kind of graphic um, ability in it other than moving it around and maybe um, turning it around a little bit. So, so you, you're going to mm -hmm. see there, it told me it was going to be three minutes and 18 seconds. Mm -hmm. There's only two buttons. There's the ma what we call the magic button, which you just saw me push, and there's an on-off button in the back. If I turn this so up, tell me if you can hear the machine a little bit in the background if I turn this up. Do you guys hear that? I'm not hearing it. No, okay, so it doesn't work that way. It is so, sort of loud, right? It is sort of loud, and it you do it has a filter that you vent to the outside. You can buy a filter system through there, them, but I haven't heard a lot of great things about that so we have this in our heated garage and um it's vented to the outdoors when we first got it we had it on the dining room table and vented it out of a window but mm -hmm. i the reason we actually got this is because i do a lot of acrylic ornaments for a local brewery and i was doing them on my curio machine and i was wearing out my curios because of the amount of pieces that they wanted and when they gave me the quantities they wanted for 2019 Andy and I looked at each other and went okay now's the time for the glow forge right um so I most we mostly do a have been doing acrylic on it and when you cut acrylic it really stinks and I'm I have sensitivity to smells anyway so we did not put it in um the studio area. That's why we put it outside. Yeah, that makes sense. You garage. want it. So yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you don't want but it around But you that. can certainly have it, you know, if you have a craft room, you can vent it to the outside, but it is loud. Um, so you don't want to have it in a heavily trafficked, like you wouldn't want to have it in a corner of your family room or something like that because it's going to be loud. Even when it's vented, does it still stink? Yeah. Okay. So you definitely want because it outside. Because when you open, when you open the lid of that, I mean, you let it, it, it automatically will um, run for a little bit longer and um, keep the fan going and it also cools you know times it to cool down so you get you know you get the notice on the app where okay now you can take it out got type it of a thing. but even then I mean the smell of the vinyl is so strong yeah no that's I mean be the good. acrylic no um, no no so things you can't do you can't do anything that's plastic you cannot do polymer clay you cannot do metal clay we decided last week because the temperature would probably start it right uh right centering is that what you guys call it yep um so nothing plastic no anything that's going to give off pvcs um wood um acrylic you can etch on glass but you can't cut it um and you can engrave on anodized metal but you can't really engrave on stainless steel type metals or aluminum you're not going to get um, any kind of impression in it but there is um, this special paint that you buy which is kind of expensive but you can paint that onto metal and what happens is the laser and the paint form some kind of chemical reaction that does slightly engrave the metal um, 
I know a lot of people do it, so it must it must last. Um, right, but right. we have not tried that yet. We just tested, you know, plain metal and aluminum and stuff like that, and we weren't able to to engrave it, and certainly not able to cut through it. Chipboard, paper, fabric, you can do all of that stuff. You can do, I believe, you can do the um, Caesar HTV heat transfer vinyl, but you can't do regular adhesive vinyl. Okay. Um, good so question here. Uh, okay. ABBDB, who just said that? Oh, does it work without? Great question, Cindy. What, does it work without an active internet connection? No. There you mm -hmm. go. The app is only online, so you connect to it through your Wi-Fi, um, and it has to be connected to work. If it's already sent it, if it started the process of engraving or cutting, and you lose your connection, you're still going to be okay, but you have to have it to start. Now, the one thing you want to do on wood for sure is you want to mask it because it, you're going to see, you can see how there's uh, burn marks, char around the edges of the engraving there. You can see how it looks blurry brown. Mm -hmm. And so once you take that masking off, the masking has taken the um, char marks and your wood will be perfect. Well, you, you know what? That. I thought it looked good on the front, the char. It sort of looked organic. But of course, yeah. with that, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. No, that's right. great. I love yeah. that. All right. Wait, I have we have some questions, of course. Of course. Um, let's see. Oh, Karen said she has a Glowforge and she uses it to engrave rubber stamp material for use with metal clay. There is certain rubber stamp material that you can use. I had bought some linoleum. Um, stamp stuff. And once I got into the community forum and start to find out settings, I read that it just was, you don't want to use linoleum. You can do it, but you don't want to. But there is a particular, um, it's red rubber material. Vul I think it has to be vulcanized. Okay. I might be wrong on that, but I think it has to be vulcanized. But yes, you can do it. I have not done it yet. But I know somebody who has a different kind of a laser who does that. And what about I, felt cutting? Yes. That's what I thought. Haven't done it yet. That would be cool. And Cindy wants to know, will it curve, do curved sur surfaces like wine it's, glasses? Yeah, it's really hard to get um, a curved surface okay. done. You know, I mean, if you made a really small letter for a monogram that would fit so that it didn't go over the curve, then you could do it, but it's not really meant to do curved pieces. You will, people have done them and you will get a little bit of a distortion. Okay. Um, what about leather? Yes. I figure it's great for leather, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so Glowforge has what they call their proof grade materials. So they have different kinds of, their, their, their woods have already got a finish on them and they're masked already. Um, they have leather, they have acrylic, um, and if you order from them, it's a little bit more expensive, but like I said, the wood is already ha already has a finish on both sides of mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. but it has a little QR co code in the corner of it. So it knows its settings. So it knows exactly what the settings right. are for that. Again, right. you can override them if you want to, um, but... Um, it, it gets has you going, settings right? That are already going. Thanks now, for that question. Now, another thing Amy. I've played with is there's some some duo colored acrylic pieces that you can get um, from a couple of different resources, where like it might be white on top and gold on the inside, and you can engrave down to that. Mm -hmm. I did a couple of keychains where I played with that, so that that's something I'm going to do a little bit more with too. And I've used krill, I used um, clear acrylic, thick krilled thick, clear acrylic, and I did uh, name stamps, my signature stamps, which mm. I had hoped I was going to be able to do on my Alta when I first got the Alta, but you can't because you just can't get the detail. The detail on the using the acrylic is awesome. Yeah. All right. Here's a few more questions. Um, Amy, thanks for that question on the leather. Julie says, my daughter worked in fab lab at her college, in a fabrication lab, I'm assuming, in their mm -hmm. etcher laser etcher, you can also do stone, leather, and cork. Yes, uh, all of those. All of those mm -hmm. are good. Um, yeah. She said some people made stamps with rubber erasers, like pink erasers. Hmm, interesting. Okay, like the old days. Yeah, and you would just need, I mean, 
the, the, the thing is, is they have this fabulous support community forum online. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, people have tried everything and they'll pretty much tell you. And there's some tests that I found on in a YouTube video of what you can do to test to see if the material is going to throw out um, PVCs, which is that's what you don't want. That's you don't why want. You can't yeah, awesome. they do have a lot of support in that. Yeah, you don't want to do yeah. that, people. Um, it's a good question, Cindy. Thank you. Does the finished maple leaves need to be sanded or does the laser create a finished edge? So what we did on on those is um, that was not Glowforge um, cherry plywood. This was cherry plywood that we bought um, through Home Depot and Home Depot online does have um, a selection of wood, plywood, and um, hardwoods that are cut to size for the Glowforge. That's how much, how many people are out there using it. So we had the raw cherry plywood that um, Andy put a couple of coats of varathane on. Um, it was pretty smooth to begin with. Um, and he put a couple of coats on it and then we masked on top of that. Now you don't have to sand the edges because they're very, they're very crisp. You do get that dark, it's a burnt edge, mm -hmm. just like what the burnt look of the engraving is. Mm -hmm. So the outer, the outer part of the leaf, um, if you go back to that last picture of it on the dining room table, I think you could probably see the edge on that. Um, well, I guess you can't. Um, so the, the edge would be um, like that same dark brown. I'm looking to see. <clears throat> Here is. It doesn't look dark there, though. Yeah, you can't see it. But okay. Because I just wasn't holding it. But it's going to be a very dark. Now, you, if you want to, you could clean it off by sanding it. But I think it's a nice look. So I, I, do just, too. I just leave it. I do too. A certain amount of it will rub off. So you, want, you do want to wipe it down after it's um, come out of the machine. Um, okay. Oh, and guys, we have, oh, wait, Kathy wants to know um, how thick of wood does it take? Okay, so you can, um, you can cut up to a quarter inch of plywood or acrylic. So far, I haven't had any problem with that. You, if you want to engrave something like a cutting board or something that's thicker, you can do up to two inches of engraving so the item can be two inches thick and you can engrave it if it's thicker than that you can take out the hunt there's a honeycomb base in it where mm -hmm. all the pieces fall through mm -hmm. um you can take that out if you need to do a little bit thicker piece we see it right there i think it's just st starting to explode what's possible yeah, with that oh, for sure yeah absolutely That's i mean I, people exciting. have done slate i want i want to do like a slate um cheese board with, yeah 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 um last if you go back to last week's um recording you can see the little football um, right 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 things that i did yep. for you know cheese sticks i would just right. do a, like a really nice clear you know with different cheese names on it yeah, or yeah, do a yeah. black or, you know do the black where you can use the that chalk you can use those chalk um markers and no, it'll, it'll wipe are... off of the acrylic that has a lot of potential. Remember when we were at um, All Things Silhouette, the woman who does the cake toppers. She has a whole business yes. of doing personalized right. cake toppers, cake you know, toppers. for weddings and all that kind yep. of stuff. Yeah, uh, I mean, I thought that was really great. great. I've used it to make like tool holders and all kinds of stuff. I haven't really incorporated it as a finished product with palm polymer yet, but I have a couple of ideas because you can you can change by changing the settings. Um, you can have it engrave, you know, in like you could have it make it engrave thicker. So it would almost be it would like channels that Cindy's making with the rubber stamp to yep, be yep, enameled. Yep. You could do the same thing with polymer. There's a um, Olga Nicholas in France has had one for a while and she has a video on a couple of videos online showing how she's she's used it and she's insetting her polymer clay into the wood pieces. Oh, I'm sure. It. Or resin. Or resin. Plenty yeah. of people are doing wood and resin. Yeah. No, it's sort of um, crazy. There's a lot of possibilities for sure. And the great thing for those of us who are on the silhouette bandwagon 
if you know the silhouette studio, studio software, you You're don't set. have to learn anything new. Yeah. You're set. I mean, all you have to do is have the business edition and save it as an SVG. Sometimes you have to play around with it because you do set different colors and it depends on whether you've made something a compound path or if you've just grouped it. So sometimes you have to sometimes you have to load it up into the, into the Glowforge app to see how it separates it out. Right, right. To make sure that you're getting, like on one of my acrylic pieces that I do for the um, brewery, um, the, we're, we're using the label art that they use right so i had to play around with coloring different parts of it basically making it into layers so that i could treat it differently sure in terms of what the settings were because some i wanted to be deep and others i wanted to be shallow some you want to score instead of engrave um so you have to play around with that and you don't really know what it's going to do until you bring it into the software i'll tell I mean, you into the app and I'll tell and you something. Yes, there's always that sort of um, interaction you got to work on. But I'll go, I'm going to tell you something. Going forward in the crafting world, I mean, yes, it'll always be hands-on. But knowing how mm -hmm. to create SVGs is sort of where it's at. And the Silhouette software, to learn it, just gives you endless tools to play with in the crafting world. Digitally, not yep. digitally. Yep. It is worth learning it. Last summer, I went and studied that. I went and studied competitive ones. Forget about mm -hmm. it. Silhouette software yeah. is where it's at. And I, I do highly recommend buying that edition it's the how does it go it's the free one business and designer or is it free one designer no, it's business design, it's free designer designer plus and then business um spend the money on it they they have sales and everything going on, oh, yeah. on it, so. in fact i think i just saw as i was rubbing running through facebook i think i just saw that um uh, it's probably Swing Design has them on sale. It's worth buying it. Yeah, the the next one on sale, so you can save everything um, yeah. as you want. You know, play around with it in the free, but and there's there's great everything. We have great tutorials on how to use it, but it's a really good um, software for all these different machines. Yeah. Oh my so God, it's so good. They're yo on YouTube, they have some great videos where they, I think once a month they do a live um, they do. YouTube where yep. they go over everything. Yep. Um, and you can just see some of the things that people have done with it. It's just absolutely amazing. I mean, the thoughts that are ro running through my mind of what oh, can it's, be done with it's, it are just crazy. It's exhausting when you start thinking. So <laughs> I yeah, love it. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Thank you. I don't know how we did it. but did we, we did the, the, what? Did we put the referral code? Oh, no. Very the, good point. Yes. It's yep. in the handout. That referral code after Glowforge, if you use that to click onto the site, you'll get a discount because yeah. that means that Mags recommended you. So she gets right. something and you get money off. So do it because it's like I, I get, yeah, a lot I get of money. Like, I get some, I get like product. Free something. You I get can, free product. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a credit to the product account. But it takes um, off quite a bit of there money. There are three levels. The basic um, has a 40 watt laser in it. Um, the plus has a 45 in it and then the pro has a, it's a, I think it's a 47, um, and it has the pass through and it has a little bit more fan control if it's running all day long. We've had no issues. Like in December, we were running this thing almost, you know, nine hours a day and we didn't have any issues, but, um, it will cool down itself. You know, so if it's if it's overheating, it will stop itself and then it will restart mm -hmm, once it's mm -hmm, cooled down mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, so you just got to decide. The basic yeah. is fine. Is yeah, yeah. If you're just going to do it as a as one of your craft tools, which right. it's an expensive craft tool. But if you're going to, you know, if you're do if you're thinking about just doing like gifts and stuff for yourself, the basic is probably OK. If you want to do something where you're going to do some production, you want at least the, the plus. Right. We did it. It's exactly 90 minutes. How crazy is that? How did we time it so perfectly? Because we're just perfect. Oh, yeah. That's, is. Yep. That's what it is. It's that's the team. I mean, it's that's, the team. <laughs> there is truth to that, believe it or not. You guys, thank you for coming on. Don't forget, you'll get an email uh, tomorrow from CraftCast. It'll tell you when the recording's ready. Remind you of a coupon code. Send us anything you have questions about at support at CraftCast.com. Mm -hmm. I know I want to add that one. 
uh, late uh, JPEG to the handout that's not there right now. Um, but just send us emails. We love hearing from you. We like figuring it all out. Thank you so much for coming on. Isn't it fun to get together and hang? It's all good, right? It is. And you it know is. what? It's, all good. it's good. And we're doing it every Wednesday. Next Wednesday, there's polymer clay. There's painting. Uh, there's drawing on metal. There's amazing stuff coming up. I'm so excited. So um, make sure and um, uh, check Facebook. Stay on the mailing list. You'll get all the information. Uh, we love seeing you all. Please stay healthy and be crafty. Thanks so much, Cindy, Ms. Pope, and thank you so much, Ms. Thank Mags. You. When is, when is Tea with Allison? Tea with Allison is going to be on Thursday in the afternoon. I haven't set the time just yet. Is it a Facebook so it's not Live? Going to be this week? It's going to be a Facebook Live. It'll be starting next week. It's going to be a okay. live Facebook Live. I'll have to put on lipstick and a little bit of makeup. Not too much, but, you know, a little something. And we'll do tea. <laughs> we'll chat. We'll take questions. And we'll just keep up to date on new things I found and all that kind of stuff. So Super. it'll be fun. It'll all be fun. Uh, we appreciate all of you, Linda. Thank you so much for coming on. All right, everyone. Stay healthy and uh, look out for the email with um, all the recording information. Until I see you next time, I send you a big, big hug from CraftCast and be well. Thank you, girls. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.